Okay, welcome to the Tim and Troy show. We have this call every quarter, and this is July, the summer months. The summer months. <laughs> anyway, I would love to introduce to you our two rock stars. They have so graciously asked, uh, offered to share with us their expertise. I'm gonna really quickly go over their um, resume again, I, even though we did in the last two times. But so many of you are new, and some of you are brand new Tower Garden farmers. So we'd like to welcome you guys to the call tonight also. Tower Tim, he graduated in college in 1992 with a degree in horticulture science and greenhouse management. Tim began his career at Walt Disney's company, The Land hydroponic greenhouses at Epcot Center. He spent his early years there conducting cutting edge research with scientists from NASA, USDA, and DOE, and Disney. And in 2000, Tim was promoted to the chief horticulturist and greenhouse manager of the land. In his role, he managed four hydroponic biomes over a two acre, consists of tropical, temperate, commercial production, and aeroponic greenhouses. I was thinking about your resume is so intense and so massive that you have so many or other things now. But in, in 2005, Tim left, uh, uh, left Walt Disney Company to start Future Growing, a company that quickly became a leader in building vertical aeroponic food farms for lead green buildings, rooftops, urban farms, and commercial greenhouses. The Juice Plus Company acquired Future Growing in 2016 with the vision to spread tower garden technology all over the world. Tim now serves as the chief technology officer for the tower garden division, and he spends the majority of his time speaking publicly about the future of farming and developing the next generation of products at the tower garden. And now he owns Future Growing. He's our uh, chief development um, operations uh, for our company, and we're proud to have him here. Troy is a pharmacist and he founded RX Formulations focusing on natural bioidentical hormones for men and women, as well as all sorts of other things, even pet compounding. He and his wife, Lisa, founded True Garden in Mesa, Arizona. Arizona's based True Garden is a premier vertical aeroponic food farm in the Southwest of US, the first of its kind facility operated by solar power, was designed in partnership with Future Growing and with the vision to drastically reduce the region's agricultural water consumption while making local living produce available year round in the hot desert regions of Phoenix and the Southwest. He offers seedlings and classes and I'm sure that Troy, you'll be able to uh, tell us when your next classes are. And he's here to support all of our Juice Plus representatives in Maricopa County, and for that matter, beyond, because he ships seedlings and does all sorts of things all over uh, the United States. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to first bring on board Tim. So Tim, I am going to spotlight you, and you go ahead right now. Well, thank you, Alita, for uh, having us on tonight, and uh, sure appreciate your your passion and your spirit, your joy um, for this he healthy living revolution and bringing tower gardens into people's lives. Um, for those of you that have heard me before, um, I want to share something that I always share um, with all these new people um, on the call tonight, and that is that uh, you know Phoenix is a vegetable growing paradise for half the year. And the other half of the year, it starts to get a little bit rougher and then it gets extremely miserable, like right now for you guys. I think Alita was sending me some um, images of your uh, current weather uh, uh, temperatures and saying, you gotta talk about the seed <laughs> because it gets so rough at this time of year. So tonight, I'm gonna show you the number one secret for growing in the heat and that's what's behind me here. <laughs> Uh, but actually, uh, uh, it, that in part is kind of true, but I want to share, really, I want to walk through three main things tonight. One is, um, you really have three options when you hit the summer heat in Phoenix. I mean, it's it's uh, really extraordinary when you think of Las Vegas in the summer, or Phoenix, or Tucson, or some of these other desert cities where the temperatures get, you know, anywhere from on average 105 to 120, and the nights get average 80 to 90 degrees. That's really tough. Um, 
and most of what we eat in our this country uh, would be considered a cool season timber crop. So um, those type of temperatures aren't very favorable. Um, <clears throat> however, with tower garden technology, we really bend the rules. For example, my hometown of Orlando, Florida, um, we're, we're always growing tower gardens year round. Um, my goodness, you know, from May, you know, mid-May till the end of September, you can't grow a single vegetable in the soil. And um, we grow lots of crops prolifically in the tower garden. So um, while it doesn't get as quite as hot as it does in Phoenix, it certainly gets um, hot and humid um, for, for several months for us. So um, we really have three options for whether it be Orlando, Florida, or Phoenix, Arizona for growing this heat. Um, we can uh, take a break. We can take our tower down for the summer and just take the summer off. Some people do that when they go on their long summer vacations. You'll have to forgive me. I've actually have a summer cold. <laughs> I miss all the flus, but I have a summer cold. Um, we can uh, implement some cooling strategies to help us get through the summer heat. We're going to talk about that today. Or uh, the third thing is we can grow indoors with these amazing new LED lights. So I'm going to kind of cover those three areas. Mm -hmm. And so for those of us who are diehard healthy living revolution fanatics, for those of us who have become addicted to growing in our own gardens and tower gardens, we can't even bear the concept of taking our tower garden down um, for three months, right? Um, you know, missing that fresh produce every day is really tough. So I'm going to kind of kind of cover um, number two. So um, if you're growing outdoors in Phoenix, just some simple tips. Um, uh, a lot of you don't have a lot of shade in your backyard, but when you do have shade, it tends to be things like mesquite trees or what we call those desert trees, which are a semi-shade tree, meaning that they still let um, a, a good portion of sunlight pass through them. So what I strongly recommend is um, your mornings are always the coolest. So if you can set your tower near some afternoon shade, what I mean from, by afternoon shade, anywhere from 12 o'clock to dinner, if you have like a semi-shade tree and you can position, you watch your sun for a day in the yard and you see where it's sunny throughout the morning, and then get your, you know, um, if you have a big tree in your backyard that shades an area um, for the afternoon until sunset, that would actually be a perfect area for your tower garden during the summer months um, in Phoenix. If you don't have a tree like that, um, one of the best shade costs out there is a product called Illuminate. Um, I, I believe uh, the tower garden company carries it on in, in their grower store, or excuse me, in their online store. And they, it kind of doubles up as a heat protection blanket or um, a shade cloth. And I really like this product so much better than those plastic shade cloths that they sell at, um, at all the stores down there in Phoenix, at Costco, Sam's, wherever. Those things really heat up and they don't breathe. The aluminate material is coiled aluminum. It has big open spaces so the, the, the air can lift up and you know pass through it. And uh, um, in Florida, we're actually up to 14 degrees cooler around our tower under a 50% illuminate than we would be outdoors in full sun. So the product works really good. I think True Garden carries a, uh, has some of those in stock as well. So illuminate shade cloth, a great, great product. Um, any shade is great, but you don't want to have too much shade because you know the, your 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 crops need good sunlight. So that illuminate is one of the best shade products out there. <clears throat> let's see um one of the most important things that we can do is keep our new our tower garden reservoir full in the summer so you know every morning on your way to work um, take your hose and top off that tower garden reservoir back up to 20 gallons why is this important it's important because um the your the volume of water in that reservoir actually acts as a temperature buffer so while it's not necessary i've, I've had my tower garden you know, go down to five gallons from time to time. But um, if, if I'm in a really hot environment, I always want to keep that reservoir full because what that's going to do is that's going to, as it as those the pump turns on and waters the plants, it's going to bathe the roots throughout the day and it's actually going to keep the plant cooler. So the larger volume of water you have, the longer it takes for that water to warm up starting from the morning. So I like to keep that uh, reservoir full. And this is also great during this time of year in Phoenix when you have the high wind storms and the mops that can potentially come up once or twice in the summer. Um, you want to tie strap your 
tower garden lid to the reservoir and when it's full it's not going to blow over if you're down to five gallons of water it's probably going to blow over in a wind like that and i think troy's going to get into that a little bit more in his session i know a lot of the folks in phoenix have found that if they freeze water bottles and put i don't know three to six water bottles in their tower garden reservoir every morning that it really lowers the temperature of the water as well and kind of um, really helps um, you to be able to grow um, some of those cooler season crops. Let's see, um, one of the things that I do, and, and, and most importantly, you know, heat tolerant varieties, we, you know, we're not going to try to be growing some of the cooler season crops during the summer heat. There's a selection of crops that do really well in the heat, whether it's our hot Florida summers or whether it's the Phoenix summers. Um, things that come to mind immediately would be like that multicolored chart. I mean, that's just like the um, the bulldozer of, of vegetable crops and it, it doesn't look as good and it, it grows a little bit differently in the summer heat. But um, Troy in a little bit is actually, you know, since he's our resident farmer, he's gonna share with you some of these varieties that do really, really well um, in the summer heat. And I'll share with you all a tip for adding fertilizer in the Phoenix summer, especially I, I think those of you that have been around a while, um, you know my next comment, but for those of you that are new to the game, um, I just gave a webinar to the, uh, the country of Canada a couple days ago, and I was surprised at how many people raised their hand and said, I do that. Um, we live in a world of more is better. Um, there's more salt, more sugar, more, more uh, double up on our juice plus, whatever it is. Um, we live in a world of more is better. And, and the Tower Garden Mineral Blend, more is never better. Um, it actually can, you know, can cause harm and damage to the plants. And so um, on, on our uh, Tower Garden Mineral Blend that we use in the Tower Garden, we have instructions that are, you know, full strength in the summer, which is one to 200. And, and um, excuse me, full strength in the winter, which is one to 200. And then up to half strength in the summer, which is one to 400. And the reason the instructions say that is because as a plant transpires, when the, when the sun hits a, the, the leaf of a, of, a, of a vegetable crop or any crop for that matter, um, it would cook that leaf. And the way, it, the way the plant protects itself from cooking is the same way people do. The, the plant sweats, it's called transpiration. So when that water is taken up through the plant, it's also taking minerals with it. So when you live in a place like Phoenix where it's hot and dry and you've got these long, incredible summer days, I can tell you that the, the plants are taking up far more minerals than they'll, they'll ever need. So people have a tendency to look at their tower and say, you know, it just doesn't quite look right to me. I'm gonna double up like I do with my juice plus. And that is, a, that is totally the wrong thing. Um, you'll actually cause your plants to wilt during the day. If you see your plants wilting hard during the day, that's a sign that your minerals are too strong. And it's not something we want at all. So I'll give you one little tip and I want to say this real slow. And I want to be really clear so you guys get exactly what I'm saying. So only during the hot summer months, I'd say late spring, summer, maybe even early fall in Phoenix, only the supplies. When your plants are drinking so much for you outdoor tower gardeners, it's easy just to go there and top off your sump with the hose. And this is what I've done um, when I've spent my summers in warmer climates. I, I will go out there every morning, like I said, top off my sump because I want that sump always full. I want that cooling effect that I get from a full sump, that wind protection. And then what I do, uh, because the plants are drinking so much at the end of the week, I just simply add 200 mils of tonic, or Tower Garden Mineral Blend A and 200 mils of Tower Garden Mineral Blend B. And I've had incredible growing success. I know Troy's done it in, on his, in his backyard that way in his patio. That works really good. And that formula that I just gave you is very similar to quarter strength. So gardening is, I'm, I'm all about keeping tower gardening fun and simple. And to me personally, I love spending time with my family and my friends. So, and going out for a good coffee. So uh, fun and simple to me is, is keeping things simple and efficient and not making them complicated. So um, what I just recommended to you um, usually works. And so, um, uh, one of the other things I've learned is that during the, during these hot months, you know, this just, this happened to me one week ago, this tower behind me, um, I actually ordered these beautiful seedlings from Troy, uh, from Troy over True Garden. And, um, I noticed just my lettuces were getting some weird tip burn. And I'm obviously these are indoors. I'm not in the summer heat, but I was thinking to myself, 
what the heck could this be? Um, I mean, I'm, you know, I very rarely get baffled with a plan problem and I was baffled. I'm like, my pH is right, my conductivity is right. You know, what the heck is going on? Why do I have all this tip arm? Did, did Troy give me the wrong varieties? You know, it just didn't, and, and I know how to diagnose. I've been diagnosing, you know, um, plant problems at a 12 year career at Disney and hydroponic greenhouses. So I very rarely get stumped. And um, I had to remember one of the things that I teach everybody else, and that's if in doubt, toss it out. Just drain your reservoir and refill it. You know, you never know when a, when a kid comes by and they, you know, friends over, they could pour a soda in there, they could, you know, pour some salt in there. Who the heck knows what happens when kids or pets are around? Um, I'm not sure what happened, but I literally just dumped my reservoir and refilled it with a fresh batch of nutrient solution. And, um, and all my new leaves on the lettuce just came out absolutely beautiful and I have no problem. So it do doesn't really matter that I don't know. And it, something like this for me, for those of you that know me and like Alita, this is very rare. This is like, this is like a once in a decade problem that I'm going to run into, but the same type of problem can happen a lot in the Phoenix summer. You can, you know, what's going on? My tower is wilting, you know, you know, goodness gracious, just, just flush your sump and, you know, refill it with a, you know, quarter half strength nutrient solution to get through the summer heat. So just some uh, very simple tips. Um, uh, my final bullet on the outdoor summer heat is pest pressure. Um, plant pests, um, insects that bother vegetable crops like aphids and white fly, spider mite, uh, some of your worms, they grow at exponential rates in Orlando and Phoenix during the summer months, okay? So what I mean by that, I mean, that in a, maybe in during the Seattle summer where it might take 30 days for an entire uh, um, aphid life cycle, it might only take four to five days during our summer. So things reproduce very quickly with these high day, high night, you know, temperatures, right? And um, so you really want to kind of stay on top of paying attention to um, any pest issue. Um, in July, um, I'm going to have a blog that'll be coming out on the Tower Garden blog um, uh, excuse me, on the blog of the Tower Garden website, that is. And um, uh, um, that'll cover, you know, my top six tips for dealing with pests on your Tower Garden. And it also has my organic sprays. And I think, Alita, last time you put those organic sprays um, uh, um, uh, up, you posted it somewhere, I think, on the on the Tower Garden um, Arizona site. So um, if you want to do that again, um, those work really well. And all those organic sprays that I, I use on my own towers, um, I know those are available um, at True Garden. Now, I do want to encourage you um, uh, for number three, grow, grow indoors under LED lights. I know there's several people on this call that are doing this. Um, if you really struggle in the summer heat or you just don't want to go through a summer again, I have to tell you, um, our LED lights have been such a joy to grow in over the older version of the T5s we used to have. Um, we've got these beautiful lights, there's no plant cage in the way. And um, I'm running my lights 18 hours on, and I tell you, I'm getting I'm getting a full head of lettuce within 24 days. Um, my plants look beautiful, they thrive. Um, I started out with, uh, um, I'm, I usually order my seedlings from True Garden because they come in uh, pest free and uh, I don't have any indoor house plants that would, that would harbor pests. So um, I have just tremendous luck. And then over on this tower, we have some of our, um, uh, that microgreen extension kit with all our microgreens. So we have about 20 varieties of plants just growing indoors on, on these two towers right now. So, um, you know, if you think about it, you're already paying to cool your home during the summer months to fit human comfort. and. If your home is being chilled for human comfort, mm -hmm. actually temperate season, a cool, um, cool season temperate food crops love the same environment. So, so that's a great alternative um, of just, you know, taking that option of growing indoors with these new LED lights. They, they work so incredibly well. Um, I haven't had a crop that um, I'm just blown away by how well the lettuce and a lot of the herbs. Um, in fact, these LED lights have converted me year round now. I'm half my towers are indoors just because it's consistent and they produce so well. Um, if you are going to bring your tower garden indoors and use the LED grow light, you must absolutely bleach your tower down with a 5% bleach solution. Soap and scrub every part, every part, the pump, the shower cap lid, um, 
because more than likely if you're growing outdoors in Phoenix during the summer, um, there is some type of soil pathogen um, that has worked its way into your tower from the dusty winds and things like that. So I always start with a sterilized clean tower when you move your towers indoors. Um, one of the things that you'll notice when you look at these towers is that with the grow lights, if these plants grow, grow uh, beyond the grow lights, um, they're not going to get light. So the most important thing with my indoor towers, I've seen some beautiful pictures from Alita and so many of the other Arizona team there. And you guys have got these big, gorgeous towers outdoors. And you just can't do that indoors. Um, indoors, um, you know, I don't ever want to see, you know, uh, lettuce bigger than what you see right here. You've got to keep it cut. You've got to use it. That light, that valuable LED light has got to get into the, the plant canopy. Um, one of the other things I would mention is that if you have weeds outside your, your doorstep or your patio, a broad weed, broad uh, a leaf weeds are host to a lot of common vegetable pests. So um, I always recommend if you're going to work on your tower garden or harvest from your tower garden, do it first thing in the morning. After you shower, you've got clean clothes on, just work directly in your, uh, go do, take care of your tower stuff for the day. And then go do your outside stuff. Um, a big mistake that people make is they'll go and work in their backyard, um, harvest some rose flowers, um, let their pets run outside, and they come back in. They're actually carrying aphids, spider mite, worms, and things right back inside on their clothing and potentially contaminating their indoor tower. So you really got to watch um, that you don't contaminate your tower that way. Um, so that really wraps up the lead of what I had to cover for my top tips that I've used in Orlando for growing in the heat and some of my tips that for those that again, encourage everybody um, who wants to grow indoors. Um, it's so much easier than growing outdoors, especially in the heat. The, this indoor growing is, is all the rage. In fact, we've had a difficult time for those of you that have tried to order keeping LED lights on the shelf. So it's, it's been a great thing. And I, to me, the Phoenix summer is like the Michigan winter. It's just, it's kind of a miserable time to grow outside. So if you want to try this alternative growing indoors, give it a shot, you'll love it. Now, um, I'm going to turn this over to Troy. I don't know if Alita has anything to say, uh, but uh, Troy's going to talk about the heat tolerant varieties, some other tips for the summer, and then um, talk about also the uh, autofill kits that you can use in the summertime to keep your reservoir full. Okay, Tim, I wanted to know, is, are you on a laptop? I'm not. Okay, because I was wanting to see if we can see your whole tower, but you can't. Yeah, no, I'm on the iPad. I can move it, sure. Oh, yeah. If you could just, like, show us. Uh, I will try to spotlight you again. Yeah, you bet. So we got so much reflection here. So this this is uh, would be a seven-pot tower, right? We've got our... If you guys our, want if you guys want to put your up at the top, it says speaker view. If you want to hit that you'll be able to see it in larger form, but I am for recording purposes, spotlighting him right now. So you'll be able to watch this again. Yeah, so we've got some, uh, uh, see five star lettuce, some uh, multicolored chard, some butter leaf lettuce, some purple kale, some mescaline mix, parsley, red vein sorrel, and then green onions. And um, I grow all these as microgreens because I absolutely love the flavor and the texture that they bring to the salad. And then we have some beautiful uh, a thyme over here, uh, some uh, red summer crisp, green summer crisp. And um, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, the spinach there. And, um, and uh, we've got some dill there. And then this of course is um, stevia and also, one of the other things I do, Alita, indoors is I've got this uh, this uh, yellow glue board for mice. And once in a while, oh. you buy onions and other vegetables, you get those little flies in your house. And then they, they love, they don't harm your plant, but those little black gnats, they'll, they'll feed on the algae or the moisture in there. So I put these right at the bottom of the tower. So any <laughs> flies that uh, come around, they get stuck to that glue board. But if you have pets, you have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. What I love about these glue boards is they fold up, right? And so whenever you bring your pets out, you got to put these away because if you got your pet stuck in there, um, that would not be a good situation. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was great. And so you have the microgreens um, extension on there. 
Absolutely loving the microgreens extension. Um, in fact, the one thing I the one thing I'll tell everybody who's growing in that one, I think we're we also have a July video coming out for the microgreens extension kit at 60 seconds with Tower Tim. But one of the most important things is you've got to keep that harvested because it'll turn into a jungle and all those little plants will stretch. So I'm literally Alita harvesting some part of that microgreens um, extension kit every day. So it's, it's kind of dangerous if you go on vacation for a week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to turn it over to um, Troy Albright now. Troy, and if you want to see him as speaker view, just put your little mouse over the very top that says speaker. Otherwise, you guys will be able to see all of us. Go ahead, Troy. All right. Thanks, Lita. Thanks, Tim. You know, um, nine months out of the year, we, do, we have a great time here in Arizona growing outside it's just these three months where it gets hot and i want to talk about uh, some of the best heat tolerant crops to grow outside and again when you look at those plants think of the the plants that have the thicker the thicker uh, waxy cuticle you know your, like your lettuces some of your magentas your rex your skyphos lettuce all your kales um, swiss chard uh, even basil grows like a weed and um, so again those things will grow really well in your tower uh, if you already have your tomatoes and zucchinis and squashes, those are summer crops. But it's important to be able to give your your uh, tower shade in the afternoon. And uh, it's important that you give your tower shade from that hot afternoon sun. So going along with the tips that Tim already gave you about topping your tower off during, you know, on a daily basis. So that way that water takes longer to heat up. And then even here in Arizona, we're throwing a bunch of frozen water bottles in that water at night cooling it down too. So those kind of things will really help. Um, we do have those auto fill kits that uh, Tim had uh, developed for the tower as well. Um, there's a single single float kit as well as uh, a float kit that will service three towers that you can actually daisy chain onto. Uh, so it acts more like a like a, a float. Those of you who have that have like pools or like in your toilet, it's a float. So as the water goes down, and your hose is attached to it, it automatically fills that tower. So throughout the week, you know, especially when it's hot like this, the towers are just drinking and drinking and drinking. And then we can just feed them the tower tonic at the end of the week. And that's what Tim was talking about, putting 200 mils of A and B in at the end of the week, which is actually like a quarter strength solution during the summertime here. So there were some questions about that. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, in Arizona, our water is so hard here we do recommend using some sort of RV filter. We use a gator filter here that we sell, um, that we sell as well. So again, taking that chlorine and those chloramines and a little bit of that sediment out will really clean that water up and your tower, your plants in that tower will respond remarkably. So when you get that white buildup on the tower, you know, that's a lot of times the minerals and, and the different things in the water that actually have come out of the water. If the water's got a lot of dissolved solids, so typically we'll change our water going into summer. And then at the end of summer, we'll change that water in our reservoir back out. Uh, someone just asked, can I mention which is the best heat toler tolerant crops again? So your things like your Swiss chard, basil, lots of your different varieties of lettuce, your Rex, your magenta, your Skyphos, all your varieties of kales. Um, you know, I love Swiss chard. Uh, green onions, chives, we can grow all those through the summer, especially if we give them shade. Um, and again, with the monsoon approaching us, mm -hmm. there's um, some questions on the, you can secure your tower down. Uh, there, you can actually do zip ties. We use a lot of zip ties here to keep it from uh, wobbling. That'll keep it from just toppling over as well. Uh, also, some people have it on the wheels. The new wheel set that uh, Dolly system is great, the five wheel. That was the original Dolly set Tim had developed for the tower. So we're excited to see that available. And that way you can move it into an area that has less potential to be wind whipped. Some people just pull it right into their garage or a side porch or side uh, area where it'll protect it. So again, doing things like that, especially when we have these um, big haboobs that just flow into the valley and lots of dust. Um, you know, I've been getting a lot of questions also, Alita, about bugs. And, you know, at True Garden, we have a bug-free policy. What I mean by that is if you get bugs within the first seven days, then they came from my farm. And I want to know about that because we take extra steps to, uh, to uh, dip our, our seedlings on a, on a 
daily basis when we're sending them, shipping them out to you. Plus we have a routine where we're spraying neem oil and pyrethrin. We have a strict protocol that Tim has put us through um, to keep our Stevens bug free. So as things happen, you know, I have some uh, customers that six weeks to, you know, eight weeks later, they're, they're sending me pictures of their tower and it's completely infested with, with bugs or aphids. Well, that happened within the last two to three weeks, typically. And uh, so, and no farmer can give you a bug-free uh, guarantee because that's just not going to happen. Bugs are part of this world and they're there for a reason, part of that ecosystem. And, uh, but if you have a, an aphid that shows up within that first week and it's seedlings from my tower, I want to know about it and we'll assist you in uh, trying to eliminate those pests. Or if it's that bad, you know, I'll do whatever I have to to get those plants replaced for you that next week. So I just want to clear the air that, um, you know, as farmers, we're going to do everything we can to prevent any type of pests. But even as those of us that are growing inside or even outside, you've got to be scouting your tower. You've got to look at your tower. And as soon as you see any signs of a pest, you've got to treat it. And you can even just rinse it off. Tim's talked about rinsing that tower off a few times uh, at night when the sun's gone down, just rinsing that tower off with water, something very simple. Um, some of us uh, that uh, we don't realize how fast that these bugs, especially aphids, will replicate. You know, this time of the year, Tim just touched a little bit on it. You know, one aphid, you know, is asexual, doesn't require, you know, another aphid, but it can, even as an immature aphid, one become, can become 10, 10 can become, a, you know, 100, 100 become 1,000. And before you know it, your whole tower is infested um, within just a few uh, few days. So it's important that we look at our tower. You know, if we see something that doesn't look like, uh, as Tim shared, he thought, you know, what's going on with these uh, seedlings, these lettuce seedlings that I sent him, had some uh, tip burn on the center. Again, when you see things like that, empty that sump tank out, your reservoir, for, you know, refresh it. And, and again, a lot of times that will solve your issue. So those are the kind of things I wanted to share on tonight. And if there's other questions, you know, Alita, we can feel free to answer those as well. Yeah, I asked if uh, people wanted to ask a question to post it on the side there. But if you raise your hand, I can open up your, um, if you have another question. I know there was one lady who had a bunch of earwigs on hers, and I don't know where she was living. But um, you had mentioned a particular thing for her to spray the leaves with. Right, right. So... Here in Arizona, again, we're starting to see some earwigs. Um, sort of ironic you asked that question because I was um, in my half bath um, last night and I just washed my hands and all of a sudden I felt something hit my hair, hit my shoulder, then drop to the floor. And here was one of those earwigs that you're talking about. Oh. So this time of the year, we get a lot more moisture. So when those earwigs come in, again, you know, rinsing our tower off, we use a lot of the pyrethrin uh, with some soap that'll really take care of it. It's a soft body of insect. Uh, so again, spraying those things at sundown. And I know you have that tip sheet that Tim developed and we can make sure we get that posted again. And I wanted to remind you, those of you who are guests of people that are doing selling tower gardens and sharing them, ask them for this information because I will upload this to YouTube. So it'll be free for you guys to watch again. And then also the tip sheet if you need that. Um, do you worry about crickets here in Arizona? Well, that's a great question. We don't have to really worry about crickets since we're off the ground. That reservoir sits 18 inches off the ground. And uh, again, having it on the dolly makes it very portable and, and keeping the dolly, you know, will raise that reservoir off the ground. So then you don't get the heat transfer from the ground into your tower and water as well. So yeah, no, there's no need to worry about crickets here. Um, this uh, woman said that she planted her plants on June 3rd and used full amount of A, a and B. Do you, you use full amount when you first plant, right? Well, when, if you've got seedlings, you always want to use a 50% strength solution initially. Okay. Um, never full strength. Um, and then again, if your temp temperature is above 90, you know, like here in Arizona, we're at 100 plus now. We're even pushing towards quarter strength like Tim was talking about. Wow. So, yeah, if they're seedlings, you always want to start out, you know, half strength, 50%, never 100%, because then you can actually uh, burn them some, and it'll stunt their growth, and might even, uh, you know, you might even lose some of those seedlings. And what about the pump timer in the summer? Oh, great question. Um, 
Oh, let me answer Nellie's question. How do I fix it now? You can just um, empty half that out and just ref and fill the rest with water, uh, Nellie. And that way you'll have that 50% string solution and you won't have to then worry about it from there on. Um, what was your question again, Alita? The, the, pump, the pump timer, I mean the timer, uh, have, what do you have it like 40 on, 50, what is it? Well, since we're in Arizona here and we're above you know, the 100, 100 degree mark, um, on the residential tower, if you're outside, you're gonna, and you're in the sun a big part of the day, you're gonna be 15 on, 15 off. And then at nighttime, it does cool down some, and we'll be 15 on, 30 off. Again, look at your tower. If you see wilting, then you're gonna wanna increase the, uh, the, you know, that interval so you're not off as long. So other parts of the country, where, where you're only getting up to 90 degrees, I would just have you 15 on, 30 off, uh, at that 90 degree temperature is your high. If you see some wilting, then you can always move it to 15 on, 15 off. On the commercial farm, you know, we have different timers where we can actually run it three minutes on, 12 minutes off. So again, on the commercial side, the timers we have are uh, able to set that, you know, a smaller time interval, unlike the current torque timer. That current torque timer we have is very reliable. So that's what's nice about it. But with time, things will keep changing and, and timers will actually get better. We'll get to the point where you can run it more like a commercial timer. It's just a matter of that technology coming out. Well, I've just said we have time for maybe one more and it's about our uh, dust storms. Okay, so it's probably the same thing as when we have snow or, or hail. We just pull it in underneath, right? And then just have, um, you know, like how do you keep the, the plants from collecting all that dust and I mean you, do you have to spray them off or I usually just use a hose and just squirt the whole thing down. Right um, after the dust storm I mean, feel free to just again just like the crops out in the fields you know when when it rains it's washed I mean, you can do the same thing uh, rinse that tower off after the dust storm get all the dust off it that'll be beneficial and again during the summertime you know we uh, will rinse all that produce before we eat it. What's nice in our greenhouse, we don't really have to deal with that, but outside we do. Awesome. Well, I'm going to unmute everybody so you can say thank you to Troy and Tim. And um, I'm going to see if we can just cancel the spotlight. And you guys are all visible now. And I'm going to unmute you and say hello to everybody and bye bye. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Troy. Thank you very much. Take him to sleep. Thanks, Troy. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks so much. Good night. Uh -oh. Good night.